Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. Today I thought I would do a little uh, chatty video where I would talk to you about, I would make an update to my notebook and plan a lineup from 2023. I made a video in January about what I wanted to use this year and to my surprise there have been some changes. I say to my surprise because usually I start a system and I just stick with it but maybe because I'm watching quite a bit of notebooks and planner videos, I've started to get in the habit, apparently, of changing systems, of starting new things. So I wanted to tell you that. And also, I've really been enjoying long chatty video for a while now, for I'd say a year and a half. And I wanted to try to do one. Well, I always think that my videos are going to be long and chatty, but then I edit them and they're 15 minutes long, so we'll see how it goes. I'm not going to talk about all the notebooks uh, and planners I'm using this year. I'm only to going to talk about the things that have changed, so if you haven't watched my first video about my notebooks and planners, I will link it down below and in the cards so you can get caught up. The first thing I'm going to talk about is in this little uh, pocket. This is a pocket a friend made for me and that I realized a while back I could use to house my new planner. It's the perfect size for the planner and for a few pen. It's also great to protect it in my school bag and because I think it's so cute and dainty I don't want it to get damaged. In my previous video I showed you the planner I was using and that I had made for me. It was a planner for my work, for my school work. I was also using it for my personal life. But uh, as the months went by I realized I didn't want to have all of my personal stuff in my work planner and it was also very depressing to have to get uh, out my work planner every time I wanted to plan something fun. So I decided to start using this undated Muji planner. Uh, it's a very small format and I added a little sticker from the Clever Club on the cover. It comes with this protective cover that has uh, little flaps. I added this little picture and I didn't think I would be loving this uh, new system as much, but I just, I'm in love with it. So as I've said, it's undated and I started using it in March. I won't be able to show you a lot of pages because uh, there are a lot of personal things in it. I think I can show you an example with this page if I had this bit. So on the left you have the weekly uh, layout and then you have a note page on the right. I didn't think I would use the note page that much but it's been super useful. So for example on Monday I had a, a doctor appointment and I had never been to this doctor. So on the right I wrote the address, I wrote bus to take, which road to, which road to take etc. Then I started doing little to-do lists in these uh, weekly spaces and also on the right if I didn't have any space. And I've really been enjoying doing that because before I would have to-do lists on scrap pieces of paper and it would work. But this, having everything in the same place, has been really useful and I've been much more productive. I've also added a few personal notes in it. Uh, this picture I glued it here because uh, it was a picture I had printed for my daily scrapbook that, we, that I will talk about later and that I didn't end up using in my daily scrapbook but because I didn't want to waste it I added it here, added the date um, and explained why it was in this week. It's just been such a great system and the paper is so smooth and I love using it. It lays completely flat it's so small, I can take it in the smallest of my handbags and I love that just I can just take it to an appointment and when I have to take the next appointment, I'm like an adult having a planner and writing in it. When I started watching planner videos, I did not understand what people would insist to fill in the, the pages that they did not write anything in because I mean, what, what's the point? But then I started a planner and I understand. For example, in April I went to Canada and I didn't write anything for the two weeks I was there because, I mean, I didn't have any specific tasks to do, I was on holiday. 
But when I came back, uh, I had two blank weeks in my notebook, in my planner, and I didn't like that. So when I was doing these days in my daily scrapbook, and I had once more printed too many pictures, I started gluing them uh, on these pages, and I like that now it's not so blank, but um, I don't like that there are so many pictures because it makes turning the pages less easy because they are more rigid, so I need to find a balance uh, in all of that. I realized that this is too small a planner for me. Sometimes I need more space to do all of my to-do lists. So I think that when I'm finished with this, I would like to buy an A5. I think that's the next size. So maybe just a bit longer or wider. I'm not sure yet. I wish Muji had bigger planners because the paper is, is just so nice. Writing, just the paint just glide on it. I've been loving using a grey gel pen from Muji. It's really relaxing to have grey in my notebook. Uh, I just don't really like the, um, how it writes. It's, um, it's a 0.5 one and it's a bit too sharp. It just it doesn't glide as well on the paper, on any kind of paper. But I just love the colour so much that I put up with it. Uh, I also write in black, uh, just to have a little bit of variety. This is a gel pen from Sostrene Grenoe. But I've also been loving using this Muji pen in the point uh, 5. And I wish this kind of ballpoint pen would come in the grey colour, because it writes so smooth on the paper. And I've, in, I've stopped using it because I didn't want to, to finish it so quickly. Uh, you can refill them, but I don't have a Muji near me. I'm not going to just order refills. So for now, I've stopped using it to, for fear of finishing it. So I'm using this Sostrene Grenoe pen. And I've also started using this Sharpie pen. They feel a bit cheap, to be honest. So I don't really enjoy using them as much but I have them so I will be using them. I've also been using these fine liner from Statler because it's very useful for when I have appointments, I can underline them, have a little uh, star next to it, so I can see that it's not part of my to-do list, it's really something I have to remember. And I've just been having this on my desk opened at the week I'm at, uh, transferring the things I haven't done to the next week and it's really keeping me accountable. I, en I usually end up doing all the things I want but sometimes it takes weeks or even months. So having this and having decided that I would do a certain task this week and seeing that I haven't done it on Sunday, I usually end up doing it that day because I don't want to migrate the task to the next week. So I, I've really been enjoying this really cute notebook and it was really cheap. So if it came in a bigger size, I would buy it again. Because I'm talking about things I've started, I wanted to talk to you about my commonplace book. And yes, I started one. For the longest time, I was really confused about what exactly was a commonplace book. And um, my first page in this commonplace book is What's a commonplace book? So basically a commonplace book is a repository of knowledge or usually people have quotes in them or their own thoughts, things they think about when they read those quotes. They have pretty pictures, sometimes it transforms into an art journal. But because it's so varied, I, I, I had a really hard time understanding what was a commonplace book. And I had read a classics, I can't remember what, what it was, but the heroine, she had a commonplace book and I was so curious. I was like, yeah, if a 19th century heroine has a commonplace book, I want one. And finally, I understood what it was because I realized I had had a commonplace book before. For me, a commonplace book is somewhere I can store knowledge things I try to understand or things I want to remember. For example, in that previous notebook, I had a, a long spread, several pages about the difference between Christianity and Catholicism, because it was something that had puzzled me for, for the longest time. I get it now. 
uh, but it was so useful to me, so I decided that in my commonplace book I would archive knowledge. And I've, I'm calling my commonplace book my brain attic, and if you've read Sherlock Holmes you understand what I mean. I was especially curious about commonplace books since I've started watching Megan Rhiannon's videos, because she talks a lot about her commonplace books, and every time she talks about her notebooks I really want to just get started and write a lot. And her commonplace books, so pretty, it's just... Oh, it's impossible not wanting to start one when you watch her videos. One thing I stole from her concept is using these little dots to index uh, the subject I'm talking about. I tried to find colored dots like that in uh, bookshops or discount stores near me, but they only have like huge stickers in one colors or two colors, but I needed more than that. I ended up ordering these ones on Amazon and they are 800 stickers in this, so I think I'm good for a little while. And I made this little card to explain what the colors refer to. And I want to create a little pocket here so I can slide it in. And when I write and I want to use my dots, but I don't really remember what the colors correspond to, I can just slide it out and have it on my desk instead of constantly flipping the pages. So the green dots are for history, the purple ones, the light purple ones are for things that are related to art, the blue ones is for music, the pink ones are for literature, for example quotes, the orange one are for immigration, which is a subject that interests me, the yellow ones I wasn't sure how to classify what subject I had put next to the yellow one, but I think for now I'm going to call this contemporary history, it's a bit or politics, I'm, I'm not really sure. And the dark purple one I call sociology because I didn't know what, what to call them, philosophy or I don't know. And I've glued the turquoise one but I haven't used it yet so. And if I want to change what the, how, how to call the subject related to the dots, I can just do that, it's fine, it's just a, a simple flashcard. Because I was inspired by Megan Rhiannon, I wanted to see if I would like to write that much because writing by hand takes a long time and because I'm not used to do it anymore, I'm not in university, I don't take notes like that every day, I didn't know if I would like writing, but it's been really nice. After a bit of my hand hurting, it's just... it, it was okay. I wanted to add some pictures and I'm not sure how it's not the final look for my pages. I, I don't really know what I like yet. But I really liked uh, writing in grey and having some sentences in black to make them stand out. I w I'm following the uh, Good Black News page on Facebook and they had posted about this artist that did this art installation, these statues, and I found them so fascinating and I wanted to have them in my book. I also copied a bit of the article in my Book, but I'm not sure, frankly, I did it to have a full page about her, but I'm not sure I'm very much interested about what I wrote. So maybe I need to find my groove, basically. Here I wrote the lyrics to the song Strange Fruit because I, I heard it in a show, I think, and it was so poignant, so, so the, the lyrics are just... Well, and the, the history behind it, it's about uh, lynching. I just had never heard about this song and about those lyrics and I just really, want to, really wanted to capture it. Uh, at the bottom or at the top of the pages, I draw lines and I write uh, the subject of the page or the half page and I glue the, the indexing dot. I also write a number. I have yet to do an index, so I'm not sure how I'm going to use the numbers yet. On this page I had read some books and I had written down some quotes so I glued the covers of the books and I wrote the quotes. Uh, yesterday I added this quote by Wordsworth and because I made a mistake I glued a bit of a flashcard on it to hide it and I'm not mad about it. I also uh, decided to start a commonplace book because of those of those things I found interesting when I read and I just end up writing on a piece of paper or in the notebook that's in my backpack 
and I never do anything with it, uh, with them. So I think that having all these quotes and words I've learned in books in one place will be very nice. Here I had kept a clipping from a newspaper about Amazons and I thought that it would be the perfect place to glue it. I'm keeping this uh, blank because I want to find something that's related to women's history to write here. On this final page for now, I, ha I saw this on Instagram. It was uh, the, uh, the key takeaways from a study that talked about bilinguals and how they relate to their different languages. And I found it really interesting. I'm giving myself the possibility of just printing something and gluing it in if I don't want to write 20 pages about a subject. I had this notebook for two years and I had done nothing with it. So I decided to use it for my commonplace book. And I found the cover gorgeous, it presents Vendée in France, and I just found it lovely. But it doesn't really correspond to the vibes I want the vibe I want to give to my commonplace book so I think I'm going to make a cover to hide it I don't want to glue something on it because I want to keep it it's so beautiful next I have my sketchbooks I started to sketch in February I think uh, yes February and I started with this one that I have finished and now I have a second one and I really want to film a, a sketchbook tour, so I'm not going to show you all the pages, but I just wanted to say that when I started this sketchbook, I didn't know I could sketch. I started it because I was doing a project and I wanted to have a place to to have a place to figure out some patterns I was doing. And uh, on the first page, that's what I did, but then I decided, hey, why don't I try to draw something? And I drew this, which is a place in North Wales I visited and I just, I think it turned out well. And I, then I decided, why don't I draw something else? So I drew this little bird, which is a cedar waxwing. And from there, it's just, it just went from there. I just love using these sketchbooks. They're from Anna Muller. And they're very slim, they're 160 grams paper, and I use uh, colored pencils, and I sketch, sketch just in pencil sometimes. It's just been so nice and good for my uh, self-worth to realize I could draw. It's just, I've just been loving it. So I started a new one, the exact same one. I like that they're slim, compact, that I don't have to worry about filling them so much. I'm using some stickers from a creator I will link down below. In this one, the first page is a collage I tried to do and I fell in love with collages. On the second page, I did, um, I'm trying to learn about perspective. So that's what I did on this page and I will do a second perspective study here. I, I just love taking them with me and just start drawing, uh, start doing something I never knew I was capable of because I never really took the time to, to do it. In my mind it was clear, I don't know how to draw so there's, there's no point trying, right? Or when I tried, I would try really quickly, I wouldn't really apply myself and then the result wasn't wonderful because of reality. But then this time I took my time, I had fun with the colored pencils and it's just been a wonderful experience. So yeah, I'm really happy about that. And I think they're really cute. This is not a new notebook. I talked about it in my 2023 lineup, but I want to update you about how I feel about it. So this is my one line a day journal. It's a little uh, planner from the discount store. The pages are very small, you don't have a lot of space to write. And in 2022, I finished this book and I only missed one day. So naturally, I was really excited to start doing it in 2023. I found this for 99 cents and I wasn't a fan of the cover before, but now I like it. The thing is, I haven't been enjoying it as much as in 2022. I think it's because last year, at the end of last year, I started 
doing a daily scrapbook that I also talked about in my 2023 lineup. And in this daily scrapbook, I basically also write uh, a bit about every day. So this feels kind of double duty and sometimes I miss, I miss more than two or three days and I have to go back and I don't really remember what I've done that day. So it's a bit, I'm not enjoying it as much. But this has been useful for when I can't take my daily scrapbook with me uh, and I can only take this one, I can write a bit in it and then when I can go back to my daily scrapbook I can use this as reference and vice versa when I haven't written this one for a bit I can look at my daily scrapbook if I have updated it and I can transfer it in here. So I'm a bit annoyed because I don't want to stop mid-year. I don't like to have unfinished projects like that because it just feels like when I see them on my shelves after that, I'm like, what? where am I keeping it? I only filled half a year in it and it's just... Yeah, I'm not sure what to do about it. It's, just, it's not a big problem, I know, but in the notebook planner community, you understand this is a, a really terrible thing that's happened to me, so... I'm not really sure what to do with this yet. For those of you who haven't watched my first video, my daily scrapbook is basically a notebook in which I glue one picture a day, I add little scraps, I write a few lines, I add some stickers, and over time it's taken more, it got a bit different, I added more scraps, I got more creative with it, and it's something I really, really enjoy. And I finished this first volume, so I started a new one. This is the new uh, daily scrapbook, and as you can see, it's quite a bit bigger than my first one, simply because they didn't have any, they didn't have the small scrapbooks in my discount store anymore, and. They only had the big ones and I, I really prefer the small ones because with this format I, I feel like I have to write a lot or glue a lot of pictures. It's four pictures wide and I don't like to have too much things going on on the paper and I have to write a lot. I, I don't really know how to, to take my marks in it and it's just been a bit, a bit difficult. I just still trying to to find my place in it. But it's still a project that I really enjoy and I filmed a process video uh, about me scrapbooking, so look out for that. And because I enjoyed this project so much, I started another daily scrapbook, this one. But this daily scrapbook is for 2021 and 2022 the bit of 2022 I did not do in my first volume because I started this project in back in November but I back scrapped until September 2022. So uh, because I enjoyed the project so much and I didn't like that this wasn't a full year, I started this one So and I went back to my pictures from 2022 and I thought well I might as well do 2021 and I just been really enjoying it. It's been sometimes challenging to remember what happened on the picture, but if this was the case, I didn't glue the picture. I only glued pictures that I had really something uh, to say about. And it's been really fun to look for ephemera to go with it, to find different things to glue. Uh, because of Instagram, I found things I had saved or I had share in tw shared in 2021. And it's just been really nice to, to do this thing. So I do this scrapbook when I'm up to date in my current scrapbook. So it's something I do when I really want to daily scrap, but I'm finished with my current one. And I really want to scrap uh, more years before that. I've already looked through my 2020 pictures and my 2019. So I just really want to scrap all the years I have pictures about. And I need to buy a lot more of these scrapbooks because they're basically they're basically three euros, and scrapbooks are expensive. Some of them I was looking at are like twenty euros, so it's just it's a lot. So even if I'm not a fan of the big format, it's still better than the alternative. And 
strangely, I don't mind the big format, the bigger format for my 2021 scrapbook. I don't know what it is, but it's just, I'm fine with it in this one. And there it is. This was my updated notebook and planner line up from 2023. It was really fun to, to film because I'm not going to talk about this to anyone in real life because who is going to sit next to me and listen to me rambling for half an hour about how I use my notebooks and which pen I use with it and frankly I wouldn't do that. Talk to anyone in person like that and go into so much details is just... I, I would be so self-conscious and it wouldn't just... it wouldn't cross my mind. I would show them my scrapbook, but I wouldn't just talk so much about it. So it's just been really fun to film it. Tell me if you enjoy these kind of chatty videos, because for me, they've been really good for relaxing me when I watch them. I can just put them on when I'm trying to go to sleep, because I have a hard time going to sleep. And I don't even have to look at the screen usually, because people, they talk a lot about what they're doing, what they're presenting, so I just listen and it's just really relaxing and uh, usually I end up falling asleep or if it's too interesting I end up watching another video which is another problem but I really hope you like this video that it was interesting to you that it made you want to do some of the notebooks I've I'm using uh, and I also wanted to mention that I did a flip through of my first daily scrapbook on the channel and I really enjoyed filming that. I really enjoyed showing you all of the things I did in this scrapbook and I will also link it down below. Thank you for watching this video, have a nice day and see you next time!